All right, would you like to introduce yourself and let us know what you're doing at Occupy Regina? Uh, my name's Nathan Seckinger, and uh, I, uh, well, at the moment I'm leaning against a tree. Um, I'm, uh, I'm here because I'm one of many people that have seen the handwriting on the wall for this for the last 15 years, and we've been waiting for just about that long for this to happen, so... Um, when I started hearing about all of these little protests mushrooming up all over the continent and then all over the world, I realized that this was the moment we've been waiting for, so I'm here to lend my help in any way that I can. And what is that in particular that you were waiting for? Um, something has been fundamentally wrong for a really long time, and it, it has to do with... Uh, something that goes beyond legislation and it goes beyond even economics and it's about priorities and values in our culture and the notion that uh, greed and selfishness has become more and more fashionable to the point where um, altruism and caring is actually starting to be viewed as uh, some kind of ethical failure and uh, you know uh, we hear all the time from people on TV and more and more from people on the streets, which is really disturbing, that if you're the kind of person that wants to devote your life to helping other people instead of yourself, that you're lazy, you're stupid, you're naive, and, you know, various insults like that. And what's bizarre about it is that when you engage people like this in dialogue, they don't even listen to a word you say. They actually interrupt you and never let you finish a single sentence to tell you things that you're saying that you didn't say. So it's like somehow people have managed to isolate themselves so completely in their own ideology that they don't even know what reality is anymore. And anybody that doesn't agree with their, you know, very narrow worldview, which is based on aggression and competition and pushing other people out of the way to get what they want, anybody else is, is seen as incompetent. Speaking of that, uh, we're coming up on the Christmas season. And I remember as a kid uh, there being, you know, shows making fun of people that, uh, that push people out of the way at stores to get toys and... Uh, and uh, go crazy uh, in, during Christmas shopping and the season of giving, supposedly. And and uh, I think in the last uh, decades, it's become to the point where it's acceptable to do those things. And people line up on Boxing Day and uh, and and eagerly uh, crush people that are in front of them to try to get the limited goods that are there. Mm -hmm. is, that a, is that a question? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a comment. Um. And, uh, I don't know if you, if you agree or not, or if well, that I, ties into what you're saying. I mean, I don't think it's, like, it's it's not just at Christmas. I, uh, I just spent a year living in Vancouver. Um, I left because, I left Regina because the cronyism here is uh, just so drastic that if you are a, a, you know, a, a you know a young up and coming innovator with creative new ideas, you cannot ad advance your career here. It's impossible. It doesn't matter what sector you're in. We're not just talking about private business here, government, nonprofits, churches, schools, everywhere. There's this idea that this sort of like generational old boys club and often old women's club uh, that they know everything. They have all the answers and they don't need any help and if you want to try and do anything different then you, you're some kind of crazy radical. So they shoulder you out and they persecute you and I finally said, you know, the hell with that, I'm done with this, I'm leaving. I'm going to go to um, a, a bigger city where I have the freedom to sort of, you know, build my own community of practice. I tried that, I found one, but the problem is everybody in Vancouver was too busy either worrying about how they were going to survive or worrying about how they were going to get shampoo for their their doggy daycares. Um, I, I just couldn't believe the, the obsession with money. And so I, didn't, I couldn't find work for a year and that's why I came home. The whole time I was there, I was dealing with people that were literally pushing me out of the way. Not, not, not a metaphor. I would be waiting for a bus or, you know, walking into a store and people would walk up behind me 
and shove me out of the way and then yell at me for having the audacity to be in their way even when there was room to go around me because they wanted to go this direction and I just happened to be there so you know how dare I you know how how, how dare I have the audacity not Public having risking. seen them to not predict that they were coming from behind me and move so that they could have a more convenient path and this was really the attitude that I saw in people and it's one thing that I, I feel a really special warmth in my heart about Regina that hasn't happened yet here it's starting it's growing and I'm seeing little pockets of it, but there's still a really strong commitment to community values. But one of the things that really makes me nervous is the, uh, all of this talk about a, an economic boom and no talk about where that money is being funneled, uh, where the workers are coming from, because a lot of them are not from here and they're being imported from other communities that have different ethical values. Um, and and how we're going to sustain the Regina emphasis on community and friendship that, that we've always had in the face of all of this, you know, drastic explosion of wealth. Because I'll tell you, that money is not getting funded into my community. You know, if you're not a construction worker or a miner, there's, or, or a realtor or a property manager, there's really not a lot of money coming into Regina. And yet, the rest of us are still expected to pay double the rent that we used to have to pay, uh, you know, to deal with all of these other rising costs that are happening all over the place while trying to sustain our, our communities. And I've, I've, got a, I've got two degrees that I worked for 12 years to complete. I'm carrying a $42,000 debt and I am no further ahead than I was before I went to school, so why did I bother? So, I'm here because this is a new economy. This is people who have remembered again that economy is about giving to the group for the benefit of the group because ecos means home, right? Ecos nomos, home, home counting, home economics. It's about sharing, right? Mm -hmm. That's an economy. Economy is not taking stuff and then, you know, trading with people through some kind of really tense, aggressive, you know, well, I'll agree not to punch you in the face if you agree not to punch me in the face. That's not an economy. Yeah, no one wants to live that's, like that. That's money warring. So, anyway, um, this was bound to happen sooner or later, and now here it is, so here I am. All right, thanks very much for your thoughts. Yeah, my pleasure.